Hello, thank you so much for your time and thanks for the click. My name is Darlin Fee. Today we are starting an exciting episode and this is going to be very simple for all of us. If this is the first time you are seeing this channel, we want to encourage you to subscribe so that all subsequent videos that we upload on this platform you will be able to get notification if you don't subscribe then it is possible you might not be able to see our videos again because youtube always updates subscribers now the first part of this is how to integrate partial fraction and we want to lay the fundamentals for everyone to understand if this is the first time then you are welcome by the end of this presentation you should be able to integrate any of these um, partial fractions but before we come to this we need to lay some important fundamentals so that it will be easier for you now let's go integration by partial fraction allows us to break down rational functions that is polynomials into simpler form for easy integration and so if you look at this fraction here it should be easier for us to resolve this fraction and how do we do that first you find the lcm and then you multiply this by the lcm and you multiply this one too by the same lcm and so the lcm is going to be x minus one and then times x plus two so when you look on the blue screen you can see that this is the lcm now multiplying this by the lcm you will see that the x minus one will cancel the x minus two plus two and so basically we cross multiply so this two multiplies this so we have two into bracket x plus two and then this one multiplies this so we have minus one times x minus one then we need to do some expansion 2 times x will give us 2x and then 2 times 4 will give us 2 times 2 will give us 4 so here we are getting 2x and this one we are getting 4 when you multiply by these two and then here minus 1 times x will give us minus x then minus 1 times minus 1 will give us 1 so we have minus x here and then we have 1 now when we decide to add them remember we had 2x here minus x will give us this x and then 2 times 2 give us 4 so 4 and then remember minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1 and so the 4 plus 1 is given as 5 and so this is the polynomial we are talking about and this polynomial we can break it down into what you call partial fraction and so this is the partial fraction for this polynomial now under integration by partial fraction it should be easier for you to integrate this and then to integrate this but for because examiners want to test your level of understanding they would rather ask you to integrate this polynomial rather than integrating the partial fraction so when the question is given like this find the integral of x plus 5 all over x squared plus x minus 2 dx then it is our duty to resolve this polynomial into partial fraction and so when we resolve this polynomial we should be able to get this and then to get this remember this is the polynomial and this is the breakdown of the partial fraction and so this is one of the basic foundation that you need to understand okay so in order for you to be able to break this down into this form basically what you do is that first you need to factorize this quadratic here so x squared plus x minus 2 when you factorize you are getting x minus 1 and then x plus 2 then the question remains how do i get these two and how do i get this one and so basically that is why we are treating this topic and so let's go to the next stage and you see how easy it is to determine that so let's now move 
Now we want to deal with some basic rules and you don't have to forget this. It is very important. Rule 1 states that the numerator of a given function must be of a lower degree than that of the denominator. If it is not, then first of all, divide by long division or use the synthetic method. Now, if you have been following my video, which we have a link under the description box, I have explained how to use the synthetic method instead of using the long division. And so here we are saying that for any polynomial, if the numerator of a given function okay, is lower uh, than the degree of the denominator, then it means you are good to go. But then if the numerator, the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, that means you need to do either long division method or you have to use the synthetic method. Then step two. You factorize the denominator into eight prime factor. We are going to have examples of this. So you must always look at the numerator and the denominator. If the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator, then you go ahead and then factorize the denominator. And then we also have the third rule. A linear factor AX plus B gives a partial fraction of the form A over ax plus b we will see example in part two and then the fourth rule rule four factors ax plus bx so when you have this as a denominator and you want to factorize this it will give you a partial fraction of a over x plus b and then plus um, b over ax plus b squared and these are basic fundamentals that we need to understand. And then the next one, we have this. So if you have a denominator of AX plus B into bracket cube, then you need to also factorize this into partial fraction. And so to break this down into partial fraction, first you take off the cube and then we have A over AX plus B. Remember, the cube was missing. And then plus B. This time around, you are going to increase. Remember, this one has a degree of 1. Then from degree of 1, you are increasing it to degree of 2. So we have B over AX plus B squared. And then you add the next one, which will come with the degree of 3. So plus C over AX plus B all exponent 3 and then the last one when you have a quadratic factor in the case of this to resolve this into polynomial you are having ax plus b over ax squared plus bx plus c now don't worry because we are going to have examples of each of these that will make it easier for you to understand so let's now move on now we are going to meet this kind of integration more it doesn't matter the level whether you are in high school you are in college you are in engineering you are going to meet a lot of this so by definition the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx now notice that this x squared here is a perfect square and then the a squared here too is a perfect square so by standard integration, the integral of this is going to give you 1 over a tan inverse of brackets x over a plus c. Let's explain this further. Now, why do you see this? It's quite simple. Now, as for this one, it's constant. So it must always happen. It doesn't matter which number is here. Whether you have 4, you have 5, you have 6 this it will still remain as one because it is constant and then the a here refers to the number here so for example here we have a squared so it is this a that was picked and then we have it here then the tan inverse is also a constant thing then we have x over a that is the variable here divided by the variable here Remember, we don't consider the exponents, but 
but the standard definition states that the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx. Notice that provided you are having a perfect square here and a perfect square here, this is going to be the integral. Now we have plus c because this is an indefinite integral. So for indefinite integral, you need to introduce a constant. Now for better understanding of this, let's have some example. So we have evaluate the integral of 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. So when you look at the standard one, this is a perfect square. Now here too, we have x squared, also a perfect square. Then you compare to the standard one, we have a squared, which is a perfect square. That means in order for us to solve this, we need to be able to break the 4 into a perfect square. And you know that 2 times 2 will give us 4, which means this is the same as 2 squared. So when you come down, you are having the integral of 1 over x squared plus 4 dx is equal to, now this is where we have broken it down. And so if you look at it carefully, the 4 now has become 2 to the power 2. Now notice that from the definition, this x is what we see here in green. And then the a is what we see here in blue. That is the a. Then by the definition of this integration, we are having 1 over a, where I said the 1 is a constant. So that 1 is what we have here. And then when it comes to this question, the place of a, we have 2 here. And so instead of this a, I have 2 here. Please note, this 2 does not refer to the exponents. The 2 refers to the base. And so we have 2 here. And then tan inverse as we have in the standard 1. Then when we come to the standard 1, we have x over a. So remember, the x is the first perfect square, the base. And then the a is the second perfect square, the base. And so when we come to this, the first perfect square, the base is x. So we have x at the top. And then the second perfect square, the base is 2. So we have 2 also at the down. And then, of course, because the integral is an indefinite integral, you need to introduce your constants. And that is how simple it is to use this standard integral. Now, for better understanding, let's have another example. So for our example 2, we have evaluates the integral of 2 over x squared plus 9 dx. Remember, by the standard definition, 1 over um, x squared plus a squared, meaning this should be a perfect square, and then this must also be a perfect square. So whatever you are given in the question, make sure you break them down into perfect squares. So as for the x square is already in perfect square. And then we know 9 is also a perfect square. But when we break 9, nine down to have an exponent, we are actually getting 3 to the power 2. And so this is the same as what we have here. x squared, we have it here, x squared in green. And then the 9, when you break it down, you are getting 3 to the power 2. So remember, we have perfect square here, and then we have perfect square here. And then let's go. Now, you, you saw from the beginning that this part was 1. But in this case, we are having 2, not 1. Now, any time you are integrating this standard, all you do is that you bring the 2 down here. And so if you look at it, now you forget about the 2 for the time being. And then let's concentrate on what we are doing. So how do we do it? So I'm saying that for now, forget about the red one, okay? And then let's use the standard integration. So let's see. By the standard definition, we have 1 over a. And then the a here in this example 2 is 3. So we are going to have 1 over 3. And then we have tan inverse. So tan inverse, the tan inverse is here. Then the standard definition says we have x over a. Remember the x is the first perfect square 
the base of it and then the a is the base of the second perfect square so here the first perfect square is x the base of the first perfect square is x so that comes up so we have it here x squared and then the base of the second perfect square that is 3 so we have it also here as 3 so we have it here so that explains why so this green x is what you see here the green x and then the base 3 this 3 in blue is what you see here as 3 in blue now the question is where from these two what it simply means is that whatever number you have here is going to multiply what you get so let's come to the standard example assuming this one were to be 4 then this 4 would have multiplied the 1 over a if this one were to be 6 then this 6 would have multiplied 1 over a so in the case of this example we have 2 that means the 2 is going to multiply the 1 over 3 so we have 2 times 1 over 3 and then when we strike it out you see that 2 times 1 will give us 2 we have it here and then divided by 3 so we have it here that means when we simplify this we are actually getting 2 over 3 tan inverse of x over 3 plus c now look at the colors very well these two is the same two you see here and this same two multiply this one and then we are getting this two and then for the green here which is the first base of this perfect square we have it here and then the three in blue which is the second base of the perfect square we have it here so this is how easy it is if you are dealing with the standard indefinite integral now for better understanding let's have another example and then you'll get it so once again this is a basic definition so whatever we are doing we are using the basic definition we have to evaluate the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx so remember this should be a perfect square and this must also be a perfect square so what do we do we have a perfect square here and remember that one is also a perfect square why one exponent two is equal to one okay so one squared will give us one so this is a good example that we can solve so when we come here the integral of one over x squared plus one dx is equal to one okay so it's equal to one over then we have x squared plus one don't forget that this one can be a perfect square and it is a perfect square because one squared is giving us one and so it means going back to this example the x is going to be the x here and then the a is going to be the one here because this is one squared and so when we come here as we saw in the previous example we multiply these two by whatever we got that is why when you come down here you can see clearly that the you can see clearly <coughs> um, that the e uh, this one is constant so we have one here we have one here okay and then the e here is one that's why we have one over one remember this red one here is simply the one here multiplying and we know that one over one is simply one and so if you have one over one then we simply have tan inverse of one then let's come back to this remember the first perfect square the base is x so we have it here at the top and then the second perfect square the base is e we have it here at the down so what, let's come back to our example the base here is x so this x go to the top after the tan inverse symbol and then divided by one and we know that x over one is x that is why when you come to this side you simply have tan inverse of x plus c plus c because we are dealing with indefinite integral and so this is the first part of the um, basic um, foundation when it comes to um, integration by partial fraction 
if you have any concern drop your comment in the comment box and we will and we will read and respond to it thank you very much watch out for part for the part two and in part two you will actually get to understand the concept very well